Jim Winston here from Wine Central Command. June 4th, 1972, uh, I was married, uh, and Ellen and I took our honeymoon to Cambridge Beaches in Bermuda. And uh, on the very first night that we were there, I ordered a bottle of wine. Now, you have to understand, I didn't really have a wine background in my family history. Uh, and aside from certain unfortunate experiences with Boone's Farm Apple Wine when, when I was at Union, this was really my first uh, uh, opening uh, to, to ordering, ordering wine uh, as, uh, as an adult, so to speak. Anyway, I ordered a bottle of Chateau Neuf de Pop. Why? Because I could pronounce it. I had four years of high school French, two semesters at Union, and boy, did I feel sophisticated ordering something like that. And it's been a favorite of mine um, ever since. And today we're going to be looking at a terrific producer of Chateau Neuf, uh, Clos Saint Antonin. Now, the wine is 2017 vintage. Let me show you the, uh, the label here. And it's made by a brother and sister winemaking team, uh, Christophe and Isabel Sabone. Now, the Sabones also uh, own Domaine de la Jeunesse which is a fabulous, uh, like lights out Chateau Neuf de Pop producer. And they acquired uh, this particular property, uh, Clos Saint Antonin in 2014. And in 2015 uh, was their first vintage. And I've had every vintage they've produced of the wine. And the wine really is, is, a, is a glorious wine. Look at this beautiful color. I love that scent, it's opening up. Boy, is that good. Okay, now, I have, um, it's been reviewed already very, very well by both Vinius and Wine Advocate, both 93 points, and I've said it before, you drink for your pleasure, not for Vinius, not for Wine Advocate, but when you see a great rating, 93 points is a terrific rating, uh, you can certainly uh, um, take to the bank that the wine is great quality, and you for to decide whether you like it. I happen to like the, uh, uh, the text here, in Vinyas, so I'll share it with you. Shimmering ruby, mineral accented cherry, black raspberry, and licorice aromas pick up a floral nu nuance as the wine opens up. Juicy and expansive on the palate, that's, that's for sure. Offering juicy cherry, raspberry, preserved floral, pastille flavors that are firmed by a spine of tangy acidity. Deepens with air and finishes very long and spicy, displaying well-knit tannins, and repeating red fruit and floral character. I think that's very, very well, very well written and described and accurate. Oh, and it's just getting better the longer I swirl, the longer it's in the glass. Oh, mm. yeah, it's that spiciness. And absolutely silky on the palate. Now it's interesting, this wine is 100% Grenache, and when we think of Rhone, a lot of us think, understandably, of Syrah, which is also an important varietal, very important in the north, not as important in the southern Rhone. And the other thing that's important to understand about Grenache is it's wonderful fruit, that's what you want, and you don't want to have a lot of oak taking away, detracting from the beauty of the fruit. And that's why Chateau Neuf de Pop producers rarely put their wine into small oak barrels, as they do, for example, in Bordeaux or in Napa Valley for Cabernet, for example. No, in this case, they're, they're using, the Sabones are using Fuja, which are huge, huge tanks. They don't want to have too much oak influence uh, to, to take away from the beauty of their wine. Man. Now, Something else about this particular uh, bottling. Most of the fruit comes from two historic vineyards in Chateau Neuf. One is called Font de Lou and the other is La Croix. And La Croix is like, poof, uh, it's one of the most famous addresses for producing Grenache. It's owned in, for the most part by View Telegraph, which is another great Chateau Neuf de Pop producer and the Sabones have been able to, uh, to secure a small amount of the production 
to put into their wines to include this one. Now, I'm going to show you something now. I want to show you something I occasionally do when I do wine tastings, how effortless a wine can be. Of course, you really don't want to do this, but this is just for demonstration purposes, I, I assure you. Get that scent. We identify all those things that are happening in the glass. Think about the palate. Take a look at the wine. And when you have a little bit like that, this is what you should be able to do. Down the hatch. No swirling, no, no special treatment. You just want that wine to slide down the gullet. And now the flavors absolutely burst on your palate. It's a wine to love. And I want to say thank you to the wine crew and also to the film crew. Sandy, thank you.